Hi guys, Angela Romero here. Welcome um, Superior Body Transformation and Ayurveda and a Superior Life. So I have been challenged <sighs> bum, 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 to do 30 days of videos, a video a day for 30 days. And today is day one. So welcome to day one of my 30 day of videos. And these are gonna be lots of different content and information about Ayurveda, about health, about wellness, about maybe Pilates a little bit in there, some about food, um, daily routine, season. So there'll be lots of different information and content going on in here. But today, tonight, I'm gonna be talking about why Ayurveda and just a teeny bit about what Ayurveda is. So why Ayurveda, when I graduated or when I was in school to become an integrative nutrition coach or holistic health coach, they dabbled a little bit in Ayurveda with for um, alternative health practices. So I was kind of intrigued. Um, I was also intrigued with eating for your blood type um, and just a couple other little things, but Ayurveda was one of them. There's something called Tibetan, me Tibet, Tibetan medicine, Tibet. Basically it connects Indian medicine and Chinese medicine into one. So Tibetan medicine, I think that's how you say it. I could be wrong, so don't quote me. But um, there's nowhere out here that I can learn Tibetan medicine from. So I was really pumped to learn that just down the road for me, maybe 30 minutes, there was a school where I could actually learn in person Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is a 5,000 year old holistic health practice originating from India and it's science proven um, or evidence-based, sorry, not science-based, it's evidence-based. So basically, um, based off of the results of mass amounts of people, we know that these um, practices can definitely help. I do not want to say that we cure or um, can cure your disease or your issue or your balance or your ailment, but whatever you may be suffering from, maybe it's inflammation, maybe it's rheumatoid arthritis, maybe it's thyroid or migraines, eczema, psoriasis, um, whatever the case may be for you, gout, we definitely for sure have a holistic practice or a holistic answer for you. That could possibly be something with herbs, diet, lifestyle, daily routine, um, therapy, treatment, meditation, yoga. So yoga is a sister science of Ayurveda. And I'm kind of all over the place because I'm just floating off the top, you guys. I don't have a set plan of what I'm talking about. I'm just flowing with my heart and my soul right now. And I know I do talk pretty fast, so try to keep up. Okay, um, Ayurveda, what does it mean? What does Ayurveda mean and where, what language is it anyways? Ayurveda is in Sanskrit. And Sanskrit is actually a really beautiful language when you get to know it, as is Ayurveda. It's such a beautiful science. I mean, the more I'm in the school, the more I learn about Ayurveda, the more I just fall so in love with it and my mind just expands and it's so much, it's so opened and everything just makes sense. And it gives me such a sense of calmness and peace of knowing that not that I have the answer, but I kind of do. I mean, not I, but I meaning Ayurveda um, and learning Ayurveda. I've learned so much. And I mean, I'm just a pin dot in what the knowledge, I mean, you can imagine it's a 5,000 year old practice. Ayurveda means simply the science of life. Ayur means life in Sanskrit and Veda means knowledge or science. So we study the Vedas in um, the Vedas, which is the knowledge. So it's all the knowledge put down. And the knowledge was came to sages who basically meditated and were one with the, um, with the universe. And they understood in these, these, the knowledge came to them and it was, pra it was passed down from one to the other to the other, basically through, um, through poems. And they would like sing it from one to the other, just through, through poetry, basically. And as time went by, we had to eventually put it into writing because no offense to us, but we be, weren't as smart um, or wise one with the universe as they were before. So we wrote it down, which thank God we wrote it down because now people like me, um, 
a Caucasian female in Southern California can learn these 5,000 year old practices and not only learn it for myself and for my family, but to share it with people like you um, who may be suffering from issues that are affecting your daily life in hopes that possibly these will help you. And I'm very confident that these natural holistic practices will help you. Um, not Maybe not heal you. I'm not trying to say I'm a doctor and I can heal you, but I definitely can say that these practices might definitely help you. Um, so, and they all kind of flow in with one another, but I went for it. I decided to learn Ayurveda and um, there are three different dosha types. So basically everything in the whole world is based off of the Panchamaha Bhutas, which is the um, five elements. There's space or ether, then there's air, then there's fire, then there's water, and then there's earth. So I kind of like to think about it as the first there was the universe and there was just space, right? And then there became w like wind. So the space, a little bit of movement starting to come into play, which created friction, okay? And through the friction, created fire. And with the fire and the air, it created the water because it all floated up and then the water floated down. And then with the sediment that floated down onto the ground, it created earth, which is so very grounding. And we say that there's three different types of people or three different energies, um, three different doshas. There's a vata dosha, who is ether and air. There's a pitta dosha, which is consisted of fire and water. And then there's the kapha dosha, who is considered is um, built up of earth and water. So if you look at me, I am mostly vata. So I'm made of space and air in my brain. So, which means I've got lots of rapid thoughts going on in my head. I've got my energy kind of flows. Um, I'm, I eat random meals, small meals a lot throughout the day. So I kind of am like a snacker. I love sweet and salty and sour things. Um, my mind just goes and goes. I like to multitask a lot. My stress comes out in anxiety and um, just love to jibber jabber. And I like to start one thing and then I'm like, oh, squirrel, look at how cool that is. Oh, that's so cool. And then there's the pitta and the pitta person, the pitta, the pitta person, since they're made of fire and water, they're the person who could maybe get indigestion or um, they get acid reflux or they get irritable when they're like frustrated or the stress comes out in them. They get real irritable and mad and like, like fire, like, like they're raging out their ears, you know, and they're very structured. They know what they want. They speak with intense purpose. They show up on time. They leave on time. They just want to keep that real strict structure. Um, they're very smart and they're just very structured. They're the ones that show up at the gym every day at 5 a.m. And they're like, this is what I do. I'm getting my day going, blah, 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 blah. And they don't like the chaos. They are not chaotic. They are not squirrel very easily. Unless you're a pitta vata, but we'll talk about that later. Then there's the kapha person. Oh, kapha people are awesome. So the kapha person is the person that listens to you when you're like, oh my God, I had the worst day ever and I was sitting in traffic and it was only three miles, but really it took me an hour to get there. Yeah, that's the vata person talking to the kapha person. The kapha person's like, man, I know. Yep. Oh, I know. They listen. They listen to everybody and they take in everybody else's problems and everybody else's issues. But you know what? When the kapha person gets stressed, they get depressed. But they're not out there telling the whole world, oh, I'm so depressed. They're still out there with a smile on their face, but they're sad on the inside. The kapha person hates to work out. The kapha person doesn't really eat too much, but when they do eat, they eat a big meal. And the kapha person just kind of strolls through life like it's all good. So that's the kapha. Um, and so basically what I do as an Ayurveda wellness educator is I just educate others on the beautiful practice of Ayurveda. I help my clients, um, depending on their dosha type, what to eat, so their diet. I help them with their physical practice because each dosha should do a different physical fitness exercise. Um, and I help them with their daily routine 
and I help them with their mindset. So I help them overall with everything. There's so much more that I would love to go into right now about Ayurveda, but I'm gonna save it for other videos. So please stay tuned and watch. I know I'm all over the place, but this is one of my 30 days of videos. So just please cut me a little break right here. And um, you know, things get better with time. So I am not worried and I'm super pumped to be sharing all of this amazing, beautiful knowledge with you guys. And if you have questions, please comment below, hit the like button because they always go like this. So hit the like button, comment below, give me a thumbs up. Stay tuned. I mean, literally stay tuned. I would love to bring all this knowledge to you guys, free content just to help you live the superior life that you are meant to live because you are meant to be here. Um, your body is special and amazing and incredible in this incredible, beautiful life. So, so. All right, you all, peace out for now. Talk to you soon. Ayurveda um, for a superior life and superior body transformation is for everything to transform your body, um, mind, body, and soul. My specialty is on mental imbalances, including the stresses of anxiety, irritability, and depression. Peace and love, y'all. 